Today's tech tip is about closing periods in your accounting software. Why would you want to close periods after you've finished it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First of all, most of you do a BAS on a regular basis. And if you go back and put a transaction in into a prior period, it may or may not get picked up in your business activity statement and you might miss it. Also now, when we tend to be using a lot of our software in um, conjunction with our accountant. So for example, if you have a live zero file and you were using us as an accountant, we will use your zero file to prepare our reports. If you then go in and put a transaction into a prior year, it's going to muck everything up because we haven't included that transaction when we've prepared your tax return. So it's good practice to get into closing your accounting period after you've finished doing all the transactions. Another thing that can happen is sometimes when we're typing, we can actually just go and key in something completely random in the date and often the program won't pick that up. For example, I saw a transaction that was processed um, in the year 1913. So obviously someone's typed something in quite randomly, but it did allow, the, the program allowed that to go through without picking that up. So let's start with zero and how do we close an accounting period in zero? So we go into our settings and we go over into our advanced settings and we go to financial settings. Once we get here, we have the ability to lock dates down here in the lock date. We have two different choices. We can lock the date for anyone except advisors. So that means that any normal users would not be able to make a transaction or we can lock the date for any user. My suggestion is to make sure that you do actually lock the date for any user. Um, because advisors don't necessarily mean that they're not going to make the same mistakes that everyone else does in keying something incorrectly. So once you've made that lock, you hit save and it will now tell you if you're trying to process a transaction prior to that date. If we flip over to MYB Essentials, uh, we have the ability to do the same thing. So in MYB Essentials, where we do it is we go under the name of the, uh, the file, we go into Business Settings, and then if we scroll down, you'll see that there's a lock date here. We hit Prevent Changes, we change the date that we want it to be locked to, um, and then we hit Save, and then that will stop the changes being made prior to that date. If you're a user of MYB Account Right Live, uh, the, pro, the way to do that is we go up here into Settings, sorry, Setup, and then we go into Preferences and Security, and here we can lock the date and again change the date to what it is. Now just remember if we're going to lock this as at the 31st of July, um, this will still allow us to put entries in on the 31st of July. So what you're probably best to do is actually go to the next day, so the 1st of August, and that will then prevent you from making any changes in July. Uh, if you leave it at the 31st of July, you would still technically be able to make changes on the 31st of July. So just a little tip with that is then if you do happen to get a transaction that comes through for a blocked period, either you can go in and unlock it if that's really what you want to do, but the alternative is you, you process that transaction on the earliest date that you can that's unlocked. So for example, the 1st of August. So I hope that's helped you to understand how to lock your periods. It's a good practice to get into and we really hope that you start to think about that as you're doing your processing. Thank you.